Hi there. So in this session, we will be discussing about a topic named Flonets in Soil Mechanics. So this topic is very important in all PSUs like GATE, IES, etc. So first we will cover basics and after that the Flonets in isotropic condition and then we will cover flonets in anisotropic condition and after that we will cover non-homogeneous soil flonets in non-homogeneous soil then we will cover flonets of unconfined flow so here the flow through water is very here we are considering flow of water through the soil so here we are taking only the property named permeability so let us take global axis x in this direction y in this direction and z in this direction so the flow occurred in x direction or the coefficient of permeability in x direction that is kx you can consider it as kx this one is kz and this one is ky so flow net in isotropic condition means here we are considering kx is equal to ky is equal to kz here permeability in all directions permeability in all direction are equal so that is the first case so here here in this case the soil is homogeneous if we consider clay that clay soil is in isotropic condition that is why it is homogeneous also then flow net in anisotropic condition what in anisotropic condition means here kx not equal to ky not equal to kz so that is anisotropic condition so here same soil here the soil is homogeneous but the property is different in three dimensions property means permeability is different in three dimensions so this condition may exist because in the case of sedimentation because of the sedimentary action in the case of clay soil let us take this one is flow in z direction this one is flow in x direction so here in this particular case we are considering this particular case we are considering it as anisotropic soil so that means kx not equal to kz because here in this case kx is very large compared to kz permeability in x direction is very large compared to kz because of the sedimentary action or due to consolidation or something like that this soil will be compressed so at that time flow occur in vertical direction is very less compared to flow occur in horizontal direction so that condition is called anisotropic condition the next condition is flow in non homogeneous soil flow flow in non homogeneous soil means here these two conditions are homogeneous so this one is non homogeneous so the first layer is sand and the second layer is clay so this one is non homogeneous condition soil is non homogeneous water will flow from one soil to another soil so that is what we call as non homogeneous soil condition then flow net of unconfined flow so here unconfined flow means earth and dam here we are considering flow of water through earth and dams it is like this
flow of water through this earthen dam. Yes, these are the topics that we will cover in our coming videos. So first, first of all, we are going to discuss the basics of this flow net. Yes. So, before starting this flow net topic, we need to know how can we arrive, how we will arrive this particular equation. So this equation is called three-dimensional steady state flow Laplace equation. That is dou Vx divided by dou x plus dou Vy divided by dou y plus dou Vz divided by dou x. This Vx, Vy and Vz are flow in velocity in x, y and z direction. So first of all we need to know what is steady state and how we will derive this equation. So this equation is called this equation is called the mathematical equation of continuity equation. Or this one is the mathematical expression. of continuity equation. So this dou v by dou t we call this as so first of all we need to know how this equation came. From this equation we can derive that formula of Laplace equation, three dimensional Laplace equation. So first we need to know how we will arrive this expression. So dv by dou v by dou t means rate of change of storage or we represent the volume of water and t denote rate. rate of change of storage or rate of change of volume. So let's start from the beginning how we will arrive this equation expression for continuity equation so for that let's take a small infinitesimally small element of size dx dy and dz so for here deriving an expression or for making an expression i am taking a point here a particular point here so the velocity of flow at this particular this particular point means the center of this cube so the velocity in this direction that is Vx, in this direction that is Vy, in this direction that is Vz, x, y and z. So first one is our intention is to find out the rate of change of volume. Here the flow occur from this phase, this one is phase 1 from this phase to this phase so this one is inflow this one is inflow and this one is outflow For getting more clarity so here I am drawing
a plane in dz and dy axis dz and dy axis this one is dz and dy axis so this one is phase one another phase these are the three phases so this phase or this plane that i drawn from this particular point this point So this one is phase one and this portion is the phase two. So velocity at phase one or the amount of water entering. Amount of water entering means Q is equal to, we have studied, Q is equal to area into velocity. So here velocity in x direction that is Vx. So inflow, inflow that is equal to that is q i at this portion that is v x velocity into area d y d z we are finding out the inflow at phase 1 inflow at phase 1 So Vx into dy by dx minus, we are considering this phase. So we are considering only the flow occur in x direction. So that is why this differential term. So that is dou Vx divided by dou x into dx by 2. Because this length is dx by 2, total length is dx, this length is dx by 2 into area dy dz so while solving this we will get vx minus dou vx divided by dou x into dx by 2 into dz dy so that is the amount of water entering in phase 1 per unit time vx minus dou vx by dou x by 2 into dy dz yes now So, amount of water entering the phase 2 means Vx plus, same formula, Vx plus dou Vx divided by dou x into dx by 2 into dy dz. So, amount of water entering, so minus amount of water leaving per unit time in x direction. So, that is storage. Storage is equal to. Q in minus Q out. Storage per unit time. That is equal to Q in minus Q out. So here negative sign is there. We are considering Q out is large compared to q in that is why we will get here negative sign so while deducting these two we will get minus of so we can deduct this negative sign if we consider q in is more so that is why i wrote that is why i deduct this negative sign here so we are deducting this negative sign because this negative sign unwanted negative sign will make so some kind of ambiguity so that is why I just remove this negative sign in all our derivation so in y direction that is dou v by dou y here one correction is there dou v y divided by dou y into dx dy dz 
this one is z direction dou v z divided by dou z into dx dy and dz so while combining these three we just add these three equation in x y and z direction here also we can apply the principle of superposition so for that we can add that three equation we will get an expression like this so this is our first equation of storage per unit time that is dou vx by dou x plus dou v by dou y plus dou vz divided by dou z into dx dy and dz that is equal to dou v divided by dou t so this one is volume this dx dy and dz this one is volume this one is storage per unit time vx vy and vz are the velocity in x y and z direction so let's start our topic flow nets So before starting this from the topic we need to know steady state what is steady state so steady st state flow means there is no change in any condition with the time there is no change in any condition with the time so there is no change in any condition means here no in our case there is no change in volume so that means dou v by dou t is equal to zero so here in our equation dou v by dou t is equal to zero while substituting this into our first equation we will get an expression like this so this one is very important so this flow net topic will start from this expression so that is dou vx divided by dou x plus dou v by divided by dou y plus dou vz divided by dou x is equal to 0 